Action Jackson, Jan Greenberg, and Sandra Jordan, illustrated by Robert Andrew Parker. In the afternoon, Jackson Pollock puts on his paint splattered boots and walks across the yard. The wind blows in from the bay, bringing the scent of salt marshes and sea lavender. His eyes miss nothing. Sunlight on the tree branches, tangled stalks of blackberry bushes, beetles crawling in the grass underfoot. Caw! Caw! The crow he tamed flies down and lands on his shoulder. His border collie, Jip, runs in circles, demanding a walk across the fields and down a country road to the wide sandy beach. But Jackson, turns and keeps going. The gray weathered barn used to be filled with rusted machinery, old fishing gear, and broken tools. Now it's his art studio, a place for painting. Some artists put a canvas on the easel or hang it on a wall. Not Jackson. He spreads his out like a sheet, smothering it flat with his large hands. He wants his paintings to be big, big as the sky out west, where he grew up, flat as the marshland behind the house. Sunlight pokes through the cracks in the boards, and flies buzz in the dusty studio air. Sliding doors rattle on their frames. He sits silent on the floor, staring at the blank canvas. Some artists cover the canvas with a base of coat of white paint, not Jackson. He wants the paint to soak into the surface leaving bare patches peeking through the stains of color. Some painters use oil paint or watercolor. Not Jackson. He uses ordinary house paint from the hardware store to make his painting. Some artists paint pictures of flowers or people or landscapes. Not Jackson. He expresses his thoughts and feelings directly on the canvas, coloring, calling it energy and motion made visible. And still he sits, surrounded by the cans of paint, Brushes stiff with dried paint, knives, sticks, a spatula, and canvases, all waiting. At last he stands. He chooses a stick and dips it in the can of syrupy paint. Slowly, he circles the canvas. Stepping around the edges, straddling the corners, black lines from a tangled web. Now, he chooses a brush, working toward the middle. Sprays of color, tan, teal, yellow, and white, an athlete with a paintbrush. He uses his whole, his whole body to make the painting. Layers build with each gesture, new colors emerging, blending and disappearing into the wet surface. He swoops and leaps like a dancer, paint trailing from a brush that doesn't touch the canvas. I want to make a longer and longer line. I want to keep it going. Hours go by like minutes. Suddenly he's exhausted, used up, his inspiration gone. Things get in the way of the flow, like roots blocking a soil line. He puts down the brush and goes into the house to help make supper, his mind filled with thoughts about the wet painting back on the studio floor. The next afternoon, Jackson prowls around the canvas, studying his work, but he doesn't pick up a brush. Instead, he walks the beach, past the sandy marches and the tall grass that waves in the breeze. He spends hours sitting on a grassy dune, watching the gulls. In the barn, the layers of paint dry. Almost a week passes before he dips a paintbrush and begins his dance. What is he thinking? Does he see the sunlight beach? The pattern of waves, the interlacing branches of the trees, the lush summer grass outside his studio. I don't know where my pictures come from. They just come. And the paint flows. Like the Native American sand painters, he saw a boy out west. He moves across the canvas, coking the paint into loops and curves. On the floor, I'm much more at ease. I can walk around it, work from the four sides, be in the painting. Fireworks splatter of rosy pink twisting ropes of white, spangles of silver, a lavender grow where pink and black meet. 
Jackson listens to jazz recordings in the evenings. He likes musicians who improvise, inventing their own melodies as they play. While he paints, the notes spin over and over in his memory, swish and swish again. The rhythm of the brush matches the rhythm of the music. If a penny fell out of his pocket, he would leave it. An insect's land in the wet paint, and there it stays. Nails and tacks become part of the texture. He caresses the surface with sticky paint-stained hands. Then one, then two, handprints across the canvas. His eyes move up and down, back and forth. With light steps, he follows the sweep of his brush. He stops, and a pool of paint pauses. Paint, paint, and more paint, dripping, pouring, flinging. The paint has a life of its own. I try to let it come through. Again, he stops. He climbs a ladder to look down at the whole canvas. Every muscle aches, but his eyes, his mind, and his heart know the painting is finished. Some people will be shocked when they see what he has created. Some angry, some confused, some excited. Some filled with happiness that they can hardly explain. But everyone will agree, Jackson Pollock is doing something original. Painting in a way that no one has ever painted before. For the next few days, he and his wife Lee plant the vegetable garden. They drive into town in their Model A Ford. He digs for clams on the beach. On the weekend, friends drop by for a party. I will take another week for the thick paint to dry. Then Jackson and Lee will tack the canvas to the studio wall. Jackson sits silent staring at the blank canvas spread on the floor of the barn, waiting. Soon, he will dip his brush in a big can of paint, lifting it high in the air to begin again. <laughs>